Did you know that Viagra was never meant to treat erectile dysfunction at all? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm sharing the accident that revolutionized men's health. When researchers were testing a new heart medication in the 1980s, they noticed that something unexpected was happening to the male participants that changed everything. Now, this story is actually very interesting about how scientific curiosity and careful observation turned a failed heart drug into one of medicine's most significant breakthroughs. Now, erectile dysfunction is basically defined as the inability to maintain an erection that's sufficient for penetrative intercourse. And it affects about half of guys over the age of 50. And that increases every decade with 60% of 60 year olds, 70% of 70 year olds, 80% of 80 year olds, and so on. So it is a very common problem. And the burden of having this issue can take a significant toll on men's self-esteem. We know that severe ED is linked to poor psychological adjustment, increased anxiety, loneliness, and less happiness in marriages. But before the 1970s, which was really not that long ago, ED was primarily thought to be a psychological issue. And really the only options were either psychological counseling or more invasive interventions like penile implants or vacuum devices. In the 1980s, researchers like Dr. Giles Brindley demonstrated that injecting medications into the penile tissue can actually relax smooth muscle and induce erections. Now that's actually another great story. So if you want to hear it, comment below and let me know. So this essentially led to the development of injectable and intraurethral medications for erectile dysfunction, things like papaverin, aprosadil, and today Trimix and Edex. But a major breakthrough came in the early 1990s. Researchers discovered nitric oxide, and they found that it was the key chemical messenger that mediates penile erection. Now, if you guys are new here, you'll know that basically nitric oxide is the ignition for erections. Without nitric oxide, you cannot get an erection. And this finding was so significant that Science Magazine named nitric oxide its molecule of the year in 1992. However, despite all of these advances, there was still no oral medication. And people did use some medications sort of off-label. Yohimbeam was a supplement that was used. Pentoxyphylline, which was sort of a non-specific medication to increase blood flow, was used. And neither of them were really consistently effective and they really had bothersome side effects. But in the mid-1980s, Pfizer researchers were investigating a compound called sildenafil, which was a potential treatment for angina or chest pain due to heart disease. Now, when they were doing the testing in the early trials, they made a very surprising observation. So Xenophil was causing spontaneous erections in some of the male participants. Fortunately, they realized they had something major on their hands because the people in the trials, as well as their partners, started calling to ask for more medication, saying, oh, I lost it or I flushed it accidentally down the toilet. And many of them, when they were asked to return the medication to the trial, didn't. And many, many volunteers even asked for access to the drug once the trials were over. They actually doubled down and did more research and they found that how this works, sildenafil, was that it selectively inhibits phosphodiesterase 5, which is highly expressed in the erectile tissue or the corpora cavernosa of the penis. And it worked essentially by relaxing the smooth muscle and increasing blood flow to the penis. They then finally completed trials specific for erectile dysfunction. They did over 4,500 men and they used different types of erectile dysfunction and they saw that it improved erectile function in 69% of men compared to 22% in the placebo group. So finally, in 1998, the FDA approved sildenafil, also known as Viagra, as the first oral medication for the treatment of ED. And this was a huge turning point for men. It not only gave them a non-invasive option for erections, but it actually helped destigmatize ED because they saw all these advertisements for erectile dysfunction and bring it into the mainstream. Then many other medications came about, like sildenafil, cousins like Tadalafil and Vardenafil. And I've talked about these medications many times before, so you can watch my videos on that, but essentially giving us more and more treatment options. Now to date, we have over 136 clinical trials on these medications with more than 23,000 patients treated with sildenafil for the treatment of ED. Personally, as a urologist, I am grateful for these medications because I see firsthand what happens to men who are struggling with erections. And when these medications work, they feel like they get their life back. They get their into 
intimacy back with their partner. They get their confidence back. So if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction, please talk to your doctor about these medications. I've talked about these ad nauseum on this channel, about the side effects, about the risks, about the benefits, and how to take them correctly. So check out my playlist on these medications to learn more. If you are also interested in learning about more about erections and erectile mastery, I'm working on a course just for you. If you're interested, sign up for the waitlist in the description below and let me know what you want to learn about in that course. Thank you guys for listening and I hope you guys found this interesting. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you are worth it.